especially all the clergymen here present. I also recognize especially the immediate past executive secretary of the Christian Pilgrims Welfare Board in this country, my brother John Kennedy. I recognize all members of the corporate world, stakeholders, senior citizens of this great state, chairmen of boards and commissions. Let me recognize members of the corporate world. And also especially, let me recognize one of our friends who came in all the way with his dear wife, Mr. Carlos Peniche, who came in all the way from Mexico to join us in this celebration. I greet all the artists, gospel artists all over the world, from Dunmon, and all the ministers who joined them, led by no other person. The prelate emeritus of the Methodist Church, leading all the ministers of the gospel to this wonderful location. Permit me to say here, ladies and gentlemen, and to all those who are watching us online, those who are watching us all over the world, on different media channels, I bring you greetings from this land that is named after God Almighty, Akwaibom State. I say good evening to you all. Good evening, Akwaibomites. Good evening, Nigeria. Good evening, Africa. And good evening to the entire world. I come to you tonight from the deep bowels of our beautiful and exotic city of Uyo, the capital of Nigeria's land of promise, the great state that remains, the only state on planet Earth that is named after God Almighty. We have come here tonight to celebrate God's faithfulness, to offer thanksgiving for his enduring love, blessings and protection. My wife is Ex Her Excellency Mrs. Mata Udom Emmanuel, the founder of Fereb, my family and the good people of Akwaibom State welcome you most heartily to this celebration of the birth of God's Son, opening of the doors of salvation to mankind. Tonight has been long in the making. Long hours of intense labor and details went into the making of this event. We had a program of action. We went over all the details several times. We checked and rechecked the details. We dotted the I's and crossed the T's. We proclaimed to ourselves, ready to roll. What we did not, however, plan for was death in the Aquibon family. But unfortunately, instead of the usual celebration of our hospitality, our Christian bonds and affection, our beautiful and world-class infrastructural amenities, that has come the major theme in today's narrative in our state. Exactly one week ago, on December 10, 2016, to be precise, the Reynolds Bible Church, located on Uyo Village Road, collapsed during a consecration service, of which I was present as a special guest of honor. Let me therefore ask that we all stand up and observe a minute silence for the sons and daughters of this state who departed on that day. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Shall we be seated? Let me remind us here that ever since Mary Slessor and other blessed missionaries came to our shores and evangelized our ancestors, we have come to see the church as a shelter of refuge. The church has given us hope and inspiration. The church has showered blessings on us and raised our moral tone and texture. Last Saturday, the roof of a church building caved in 
while worship was going on. And this led to the death of 26 persons. We have not fully recovered from the shock. But let us say that what fell was a church building, man's handiwork, not God's promise. We are still standing on God's promises. On Christ, the solid rock, we still stand. This, however, should serve as a reminder of God's faithfulness. Ever since he created the sun and put it there, we have never had a blackout. The sun has never run out of gas. The collapse of the building was man's error. And that is why we have set up a high-powered panel of inquiry to determine what went wrong. We dedicated two days of mourning for the souls of the departed. We activated the full machinery and resources of the government to aid in the rescue and evacuation of victims of the tragedy. And we have assured the victims' families of government's resolve to stand by and with them during this time of mourning. I personally led the team of rescuers and called in specialists, physicians from across the nation. My conviction and belief is that every Aquibom life matters and we must do all we can to save lives. This has been a state national tragedy and I wish to commend our people for coming together as one. I want to thank our President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammad Obuari, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, the Senate President, the Senate Deputy President, the Senate Minority Leader, distinguished Senators, my brother governors who call me all of them, all the 36 governors, captains of industries, the central bank governors, federal government, parastatal heads, ministers of this country, and all those across the nation and the world who have called me to show solidarity with us over these sad incidents. Many have sympathized with me or questioned me for going to church, but I'm happy that I was there. The footsteps of the righteous are ordered by God, and he took me there to save lives. I believe that if I were not there to personally supervise the rescue efforts and mobilize the best possible network of medical experts and rescue workers, the casualties would have been a lot more. I was not elected to share your joys only. I was elected to also share your pains whenever it arises. I am here to laugh with you and cry with you as your governor. We are all in the same boat together. I share that grievous pains with everyone on that black Saturday inside that church. My heart would bleed forever as I recollect the harrowing scene. But then, the Aquibum story is that we have met with triumph and disaster several times, and we always forge ahead. No calamity can separate us from the love of God. We remain the only state that is named after God Almighty. And our faith in the Lord remains sacrosanct. We will all recover from this tragedy and march on to greatness because we have all Dakada or reason to claim the faith of our greatness. Last year, when we gathered here, it was against the background of the annulment of election in 18 local government areas and a call for a rerun by the appeal court of the mandate which the good people of Aquibom State gave to me. Yet, we danced and sang. And I declare to you that the supreme God that we worship will give us supreme victory in the Supreme Court. I still remember that after I had made that prophetic declaration, Donnie McLaughlin one of the featured artists took over and sang in vernacular the song that says, you will sing again that song of joy in your heart. That's the song we sang immediately I made that statement. We have come here to sing that song again. The song of 
our supreme victory in Supreme Court through our Supreme God.